Then we're going to come back into After Effects and bring in our Photoshop document. Merge layers, OK. Then if we overlay it, you'll see it straight away. Oh, he's looking dead. And if we scroll through, we should get a pretty good result straight away. Look at that. That doesn't actually need much happening to it, I don't think. It blends in really well. So, what you might want to do is to make this hat, because this hand may move a bit more, so grab our Photoshop document and pin tool round this hand and then press M make sure we set it to subtract obviously we don't want pieces of the tail so press V to grab our move tool like that because I have a feeling that it's, yeah look see he's and by doing that it's now looking really cool Ooh, we're gonna have to feather that F click on this icon to shut off that mask but it, well it's still working but we can't see them annoying guidelines and that's looking pretty good so the only thing that I've got left to do uh, I won't bother saving it is add some effects so the first thing that you might want to do is add some blood squirting out you can do that using um, particular just or create a particle system or if you've got some real live elements of blood squirting out I'm sure you can find some. Check out detonationfilms.com, they might have some. You could remove the background. I tried working on that, it didn't work out very good at all, so I gave up on that. Um, one thing that's really good to sell the effect is... Right, first of all, we'll create an adjustment layer. Um, and this adjustment layer will add some color correction. will add some curves effect. Color correction, we'll add some levels, a tint effect, color correction, no sorry, blur and sharpen, we're going to add a sharp mask and some grain. We're going to add noise because grain takes forever to render and I think noise works just as well. Turn off the tint for now, add some add some of this stuff, it's looking a bit green intensive so we're gonna come down here sorry I'm doing this a bit fast, oh dear that doesn't look good at all does it you know what I might just not make that so crazy okay crush some of the blacks boost some of the whites, actually I'm gonna decrease some of the whites because it's a very blown out picture then we'll turn on the tint and tint's really good at for controlling the saturation because as you can see if you turn it fully off then you got your original and then black and white and somewhere in between we'll say around 22 sharp mask is really good um, keep the radius fairly low turn up the amount I always use sharp masks I think they work pretty well now turn off use color noise because then it's gonna throw in some random color pixels and we don't want that we just want some grain over me and the wound to try and make it look like it's one piece of footage now a really good thing which I thought really sold the effect was if we grab the composition bring it into a new one so basically we're pre-composing that and if you go on videocopilot.net then there's some really cool presets. Check out the presets. Download Camera Shake, and we're going to add shake after shake footage. Drag and drop it on, and then that is going to add some camera movement. And what you want to do is set the speed down to one, so then it just looks like a handheld camera. And it's not shaking over the top. Now here's what I did in my footage, was I created some fake depth of field. Um, by d to do that, I added new adjustment layer, new adjustment layer. And then with the first adjustment layer, we're going to create a mask that goes around here. 
like that. And then effect, blur and sharpen. We're just going to do a simple fast blur because it renders faster and like blur that out. And then press the F tool to grab our feather controls and then we'll feather it a bit. And then with the other one, the other adjustment layer, we're going to go effect, blur, fast blur, and grab our rectangular tool and do it there. Increase the blurriness. And feather it, obviously, but not as much. Um, about 122, that looks good. Okay, then as you can see, it's going to create some weird looking stuff because of the tiles. So, the best thing to do is really just, I think, just to scale it up. Um, that looks pretty cool. And then, if you've got any of Andrew Kramer's products, I recommend Film Magic Pro. Um, it's really good, and then it will really make it look cool. And that is, in a nutshell, what I did to create that effect. Use it, spend much more time because it's looking very basic, a bit two-dimensional. But I'm sure you can create much things that are much better now you know the technique. So it works just like a matte painting. Also, I hope you picked up on a few Photoshop tips, some After Effects tips with the fake depth of field. It makes it look really filmic, if, especially if you do some more filmic colour corrections. In fact... A film, really good thing to make it look filmic is the um, photo filter. If you use that, it adds some warmth or you can add a cooling filter. And it tints the um, whites, you see, really well, I think. And you can mess around with the settings and stuff like that. And then, also, you add a glow. But obviously, you increase the threshold, you increase the radius and decrease the intensity to something low like 0 0.2 and that creates a pretty cool filmic effect wow this is a really multi-purpose tutorial isn't it? I might have to upload it in two parts um, okay well I hope you enjoyed and then obviously sorry go com in our don't die to comp we go composition add to render queue and then set it to where is it quick time movie format set it to photo jpeg however many frames you did and best and then output audio I would do ok thank you for watching I'm Daniel Allen from youtube.com forward slash dan on a bouncy castle and until next time